So as I mentioned, a closer look at today's otherwise positive housing data underscores that challenge I'm talking about. And it's, and it's the fact that uh, people, uh, particularly younger people, uh, are sort of stuck. They're, they're renting, they're not buying new houses, and many of them don't want to buy a new house. We want to bring in a panel of experts to discuss the, uh, the near and long-term ramifications. John Tamney and Eric Schiffer. John, uh, it's starting with you. You know, we keep hearing about the plight of the millennials, and, but I also think there's some sort of a uh, sea shift with respect to just people wanting to live in cities. Well, it's a hugely bullish signal that millennials aren't so eager to buy houses. It's got to be remembered that housing's not investment, it's consumption. When you buy a house, you're not making yourself more productive, you're not opening foreign markets, your purchase won't lead to the next software innovation that changes the economy. Housing's consumption, so when it does really well as it did in the 70s and 2000s, that's a very negative economic signal. This is bullish. But Eric, I got to tell you, you know, uh, maybe maybe it's not the investment it w once was, but overpaying for rent and uh, you know going to the nearest uh, you know bar and drinking away, <laughs> having fun, uh, the yellow sort of thing. I don't know how long that, how much of a uh, positive economic impact that has. No, absolutely, Charles. I think, look, at some point there will be this movement, and but I also think it is part of just the trend uh, in terms of the the behavior of millennials. At some point, you'll get a movement which I think absolutely can be incredibly bullish for the country and the markets, et cetera. Certainly, real estate from an investment standpoint. I think we're going to have to wait a while, though. I think uh, they would prefer to live with mom uh, or rent. Uh, but at some point, rents just don't make sense, and mom doesn't want you there anymore. And, and at some point, you want to move out. It'll happen. It should happen in mass. I would figure a few more years. So, Eric, uh, you know, and, and John, but I'll start with you, Eric. Right now, a lot of people talk in home ownership at a 50-year low. Is that no longer? Is that how much of an economic proxy is that, then, Eric? I think it's a good proxy. I would imagine that at some point, I think consistent with this trend, Charles, of millennials beginning to make the move, you'll see that being a, a driver. I think that also as we get clarity about the economy, I mean, the, this has been an expansion, uh, but it's been a pretty, uh, what, what I would consider to be tepid expansion. If there's clear signals that the economy begins to really break through, green shoots galore in a massive way, uh, then I think that drives also yeah. the, the fact that you want to get into the housing side. Green shoots, I think some of us are now thinking by this time this should have been redwoods. I, I can see you champing at the bit, John, but <laughs> I also want to get a, a, a play a sound bite from our own Peter Barnes because he sat down with New York Fed President William Dudley earlier today, and as we await these Fed minutes, Dudley hinted at a rate hike coming a lot sooner than Wall Street was expecting. Take a listen. I think, you know, we're edging closer towards, you know, the point in time where it will be appropriate, I think, to raise interest rates further. Could you see uh, a, a rate hike potentially in September? Uh, you also have meetings in November and December. Yeah, I think it's possible. I mean, I think we'll have to see how the data f uh, falls and uh, where we are in terms of, you know, the, su the broad supports for the economy. John, I, I think everyone on Wall Street has sort of written off any sort of rate hike before the election. Oh, who cares? What difference does it make? The Fed interacts with the banking system. U.S. banks represent 15, 1, 5 percent of total lending in the economy. That number's in free fall. What difference does it make what a shrinking source of credit means versus the whole economy? What the Fed and banks do, forget about it. That's not the real economy. All right, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. I can't have to bring you guys back real soon, maybe after these minutes. Appreciate it.